Ho, ho, ho. It's Christmas. This is the Daily AI Show, and we are so happy that you guys are here with us today. We have not the whole crew, but that's okay. We thought people might be out. We do have Beth, Andy, and I'm Brian. And um, yeah, we're just coming to you today. We decided that a few of us were going to be around and could do this on Christmas Day. Andy, it's 7 a.m. where you are. Um, so a little bit earlier for you, you haven't, you know, I know you're you're racing to get underneath that Christmas tree to open up all your fun presents. San- you Santa have. already came. So uh, oh, you know. <laughs> you're good. You're good then. We've uh, we've opened up presents. My, my immediate family's opened some presents and then we have a a pause here and then there'll be uh, there's some more over at the grandparents' house. So that'll be coming up for us uh, here in a little bit. But we wanted to jump in today. We decided to do this show. People are like, you're doing a Christmas show? That's what I kept hearing from my family yesterday. <laughs> and so I said, yeah. I said, there's a couple of us that can do it. It's only 30 minutes. Why not? It might be fun. So the the theme of this show, guys, is you know AI tech, AI gadgets, AI toys. Um, what is AI and what is an AI? You know, there's it's a it's a it's a fun word to throw on the end of pretty much anything. And a barking a robot dog that you can buy your kid for twenty bucks, probably not AI. You know, uh, and then there's a the, the other end of that is uh, the humanoid robots from Tesla and Boston Dynamics that are probably have a lot of AI in them. So I don't know if you guys have any like you know are there, are there any on the top of your head or any any toys or gadgets or you're like you know what that's cool that's got some AI built into it I would love to have that. I want to just mention before you start, just in response to what you just said, that, you know, there's a progression that we've been observing over the last couple of months of creating smaller and smaller models that can fit into a smaller number of parameters. And so the the toy robot dog that has onboard AI and Mm -hmm. memory is not far away. Oh, no, no, no. It's got, here. Got one, Beth? Oh, is it? Yes. Oh, here. Okay, go. <laughs> um, yeah, I love it. So uh, there's a dog called Luna. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it is, it's not 20 bucks. Uh, it's <laughs> 488. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, and there's a $50 coupon, but it's chat GBT enabled. Um, it uh, and you can get it on Amazon. One year warranty against manufacturing mm. de- defects. Um, the uh, it doesn't. Let me actually share my screen. Do you have to pick up after it? That's all I want to know. You don't. Uh, you don't have to pick up after it. It can learn tricks. It can do all sorts of stuff. They said it loves to play fetch, and then and they show dog. the actual real dog. Yeah. <laughs> like bringing the ball back and the yeah. real dog gets, I swear, looking at Luna, like, what is, <laughs> what is it? It doesn't like, like, it's not even dog enough. Like that, <laughs> that the dog is yeah. like, yeah. you shouldn't be here. It's not yeah, a cat. Yeah, yeah. It's not a dog it has um, ears that, uh, and a, and the motion on its head, but it has yeah. wheels. So it doesn't have four legs, <clears throat> like the yeah. Boston dynamic. Um, yeah. and, but is, is it, is the toy designed to speak to you as, as your dog? Um, the toy, here we go, um, is designed, it communicates, but it does not give spoken word response. Oh, it barks in Morse code. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, well it did like, it uses, it's like, it can play games with you on an iPad. Mm. So like it can touch an answer. Oh. With its ear, yeah, I I think it'd See, be much more interesting to have a, a, a simile of a dog, but one that can speak to you, but is programmed to represent about the level of intelligence and right. and sophistication yeah. of a dog, not AI level of intelligence, but just just the dog. Um, yeah. The other thing that I thought was cool that was not dog based, because um, there are other robots and that kind of stuff, but Mattel came out with an AI Pictionary game, which I thought was kind of interesting. Okay. Sadly, it looks cheesy. It looks like they said to somebody that they don't respect, sure, go ahead, do whatever you want with it. And they did not <laughs> put a ton of like money into it, but you, it looks like you play it with an iPhone. I don't know if it has an Android app. And the humans draw, and the AI guesses. Hmm. That's I think interesting. That's an interesting, like twist. Yeah, that kind of goes in line with like your 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 uh, image to image uh, apps that yep. we've seen. Um, 
who does that right now? Leonardo, I think, has it where you can draw what right. would be a very crude looking boat, a sailboat. And it's like, oh, you mean a sailboat? So we that's kind of funny. It, that's interesting because that does exist. So right. putting that into a game format where the AI is trying to guess your my crudely drawn uh, whatever um, right. is actually kind of a cool idea. I like that. I like that. And Part of why I'm saying that it doesn't look like it's really massively thought out is if you've played Pictionary, it's like a full board game. You go all right. the way around. And this has like a little, I don't know, you go like maybe eight places on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, guys, you really did not expect this to do yeah. well. Um, yeah, just go to sort of throw it out there and see what would happen. <laughs> I, You know, I, you bring up, I want to go circle back to the dog thing. Okay, because... That's definitely going to be a hot market, I believe. Mm -hmm. I will say for somebody, maybe like my daughter. So my daughter, um, not jokingly to her, every year since she was as little as she could write a Christmas list, always writes a dog on the Christmas list. Mm -hmm. She knows there's not going to be a dog on Christmas. <laughs> like it's not, it's not, it's not coming. It's like you know, I always tell her when she's an adult and she can, you know, whatever. And but she's like, hey, if I don't put it on the list. It, it'll never happen. Right. You know, like you just, I can't, you know, I can't not put it on the list. So every year it shows up on the Christmas list. Right. So, um, I look at some of these pets, pets, these AI pets, if you will. And there's the one that's out. It's not called Luma. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but they're back ordered and back ordered. I don't know. There's so much AI built, but it's, it's like the, the dog doesn't get up and roam around. It's like, it looks like it's just laying, but the dog will lay in your lap. It breathes. It has a breathing sensation. It has oh, wow. a warming to it. You, it's got real fur mm. or you know synthetic e real fur, whatever the case is. Um, it responds to some commands as far as like looking your way and stuff like that. But it's just it's just meant on the, like the therapy side of things or elderly people maybe in a nursing home is where I see this being massive. You know, you have huge issues with um, depression in nursing homes as you would and stuff like that. And I look at these kind of toy slash actual human therapy type, you know, and maybe there's a mix in there. And I look at somebody like my daughter and I go like, Oh, like actually, yeah, I see, I don't know what that is, but I see a, a value in something like that in the near future where it's just, there for both comfort, but it's also got some AI built into it. So I think it's going to be a really interesting space. I mean, obviously people are working on this and then I don't know, Beth, is it going to, you know, in years to come, I don't think this is a 2024 thing, but is it home versions of the Boston dynamics bot, you know, uh, where they always look like they're, they just stepped on ice, like the, the feet prints, you know, instead <laughs> of looking more like a gallop or whatever. But is that, is that the future of this is like our, in the next 10 years, will people have fully autonomous AI robots that kind of like what you kind of see now where they go out and they do, but then they go sit back like on a Roomba base to, to recharge. Right. So if you're not interacting with them, they're charging on their base. And then if you're like, hey, whatever the, the wake word is, bah, 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 it goes around, it can maybe climb stairs, maybe it can't. I don't know. I don't, I don't you know. Um, it can remind you about your medications. It can remind you to go pick up your kids. I don't, I, you know, what does that look like to you guys? Cause it's definitely coming, but like, I'll, I'll, I'll spin up on, on this one. So yeah. just yesterday on NPR, I listened to a, uh, a little short article on a book that has just been written <clears throat> by Ray Kurzweil and one of his offspring. It's one of his children. Now Ray Kurzweil is an incredible scientist inventor in, in U.S. history, uh, going all the way back to synthesis of voice, like, you know, the, the sound of, um, of the hawking. That's a Kurzweil synthesis, voice synthesis thing. The synthesizer that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stevie Wonder plays, Kurzweil. Uh, and he's now the chief scientist uh, for futurism at Google. And uh, so he's also written a lot about longevity and about the coming singularity. And just he's a really an advanced, uh, you know, uh, mind in our world. So he and his, uh, I think his daughter or his son, and some of his offspring, I, I don't have a lot of facts about it, but they've written a book about building a chat bot about their father. Mm -hmm. And so that they can speak to their father 
and, and they've accumulated now they've have access to extraordinary resources. So I'm very interested in getting sure. the book and reading about the development of this chat bot and just what they do with it. But this is threading off of what you were just saying, Brian, which is how comforting is it to have a dog? Maybe it's even more comforting to have some physical representation of me in my mother's room in her state of dementia that she can speak to and it answers in my voice and comforts mm. her in my voice. Like the familiarity of those sounds and the mm. constant omnipresence of something that's been built to represent the supporting community around a person of advanced in advanced states of dementia, for example, I think would take a, an enormous burden off the other members of the family who are or having to take care of that person by being yeah. present to them, just in order I mean, to maintain psychological stability of whatever's remaining of their sense of self. So that that's a very interesting side too, Andy, right? The other side of that is even less human interact from the family because they're like, oh, the AI is there and can handle. So there's like there, yeah, there may be it some, could be both sides, right? Yeah. It could be, oh, I never show up anymore because she's good or he's good over <clears> there. They they can ask me anything they want anytime or yeah. whatever. And, you know, honestly, you just made me think too, like, I, again, not, not a pet person. Don't hate pets, just not a pet person, right? Beth, you go and I know you do pet sitting. And so you're much more around it. Andy, you've got all sorts of animals on the farm, stuff like that. So I, I also think, you know, all these people who grieve the loss of pets, is there something there in the future of some sort of manifestation, some sort of, oh, we can, we can make your... Cocker Spaniel, I don't know. Some dog. No. Uh, <laughs> nope. That, nope. 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 No, like, no to what? Some ways, what? What are you saying, uh, Beth? No to what? Uh, no dead resurrection of Cocker Spaniel, either AI or cloning. Nope. 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 Okay, nope, we'll nope. pick a, 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 a golden retriever. I don't know. Pick a, pick, a, pick a dog. No, it's not about the Cocker Spaniel. <laughs> oh, you're okay. What are you saying? You just don't want to see that at all. You don't want to see a, a representation of a of a deceased animal that might be, that might help with the grieving process of a owner. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't think it would help with the grieving process. Okay. Um, uh, in fact, we've talked about dead relatives and that right. seems yeah. like slightly less creepy to me. Um, the but, relative or the uh, pet? Which one? The relative. <laughs> Wait, the, the 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 dead the AI version of the dead relative is less creepy to you than the, the dog. Yeah, the idea mm. that this person's kids could talk to him. Andy's talked about doing that as well, right? right so yeah. having something. You've talked about walking yeah, into yeah, your I'm kitchen and that, have your yeah, mom say, sure. "Hey, Bri, <laughs> good yeah. morning." Right? How about yeah, a talking totally dead parrot? You don't have to bring the dead parrot back because okay. Uh, we need to get back to toys, but um, I was primary caretaker of my mother who, uh, through her dementia journey, which lasted about six and a half years, and there was a time period where we had all these pictures on our walls of people that were part of her life, right? Mm -hmm. And that was really wonderful and connected to her. Um, and there then became a time where she did not understand that they were pictures. She was uh, starting to hallucinate a little bit, which happens mm -hmm. with dementia. And uh, and I would, <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out, but I would come in and she would be like, I don't like what they're saying to me. Mm. And I, uh, okay. And and yeah. uh, my, like my mom hallucinated a bunch of stuff, you know, sure, like yeah. there were soup ladies, like, hey, what would you like for what would you like well, for the, lunch? The, the would AI you like soup? Powered. And my mom literally <clears throat> turned to the corner and was like, ladies, would we like soup? <laughs> and I was like, excellent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go prepare sure. yours and you'll let yeah. me know what they would like. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So now, now just imagine this. The it, it, I love this example of the images on the wall. Well, now imagine if they really can, it can voice. And the AI can, you know, with its camera, can figure out whether it's getting a positive or a negative response from the patient. Yes. And, and it's training itself to do only things that comfort and, 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 and delight the, the, uh, the subject. So yeah. I, I really, th there's an amazing potential out there for something positive to come out of that. Yeah. And the, 
I'm j- it just needs to be done in a sensitive way because yeah, in the same right, way, uh, for the sure. same concerns that I have with doing this with children, um, you are doing sure, it with a population sure. who will potentially not be able to distinguish that this right. is AI, yeah. not real. Yeah. Um, and there are times where, uh, you know, like we sense, like you are an energy in my space mm. and now you sound like an energy in my space, but I cannot find you. <laughs> Your yeah. energy is non-existent. No, okay, I, well, I agree with is, you. This is semi morbid, so let's let's go back <laughs> to the Christmas. fun toys. In AI. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! You got, Brian, Brian, show us something that's really fun. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I will share my screen here because it'd be faster to. This is more of a visual, so let me just share my screen because we can kind of talk about some of these robots. I, I, this is fifteen. It's called fifteen robots powered by AI, and they're insane demo videos. So we don't have time to go through all the demo videos, but fifteen is more than I knew existed with AI robots. So I guess that's a. Um, I guess that's kind of cool. So let's just bring this up really quick. We'll just sort of scroll through. Um, all right, so first up, it looks like Boston Dynamics Atlas. I think we have seen these videos. I won't bother playing it, um, but where Atlas can um, move move all sorts of stuff. I guess maybe you won't hear any sound on this, but let's just see if we get a little. Oh, we can hear the sound. So oh, you can? <clears throat> Worker can hear hammering. hammering, yeah. Right, so picking up some wood, uh, you know, bringing it up to the worker up on some some scaffolding. Um, I think we've seen these sort of boss dynamics. I mean, obviously every year they get a little cooler, a little cooler. Now it's going to go up the steps. It's going to bring up a bag to mm-hmm. him. So pretty cool stuff here. He's going up the steps, then up a plank. Um, oh, he, he, he put the plank up there so he could go up there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what was in that bag, but hopefully it wasn't breakable. Um, <laughs> and he's, Doing like a $10 million Ooh. man jump on all these things, right? Yeah. Like, oh, 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 yeah. Like side side flip Show or something. Off. Okay. Um, up next is the Optimus Gen 2. That's from Tesla. Um, we've seen a little bit of these guys here. Um Bumblebee, it says from 2022. And then so now we're looking at the Optimus, the Gen 2. Um, I would say the motions are actually fairly human-like. Yeah, they're not super um, jumpy or anything like that. So now we're seeing the the robot kind of, I don't mm-hmm. know, thirty percent walking speed boost. It's it looks like um, it's an odd my old stance, grandpa, though, isn't it? <clears throat> Look like looks yeah. like he's got it. He's trying to clench his butt there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Treadwell said, you know, it'll be a great advance when they don't look like they have to go to the bathroom the whole time they're walking. <laughs> right. Uh, this one's new because it's from China, or not new, but new to me. Uh, Unitree's general purpose humanoid robot says the Unitree H1 is claimed to be the first general purpose humanoid robot with a price tag of 90,000. It's 1.8 meters tall, which sounds almost like six feet. Uh, if I did the fast math, I don't know what kilograms is times 2.2, right? So 47 kilograms times 2.2 would give you the pounds. Um, and it can walk 5.5 kilometers per hour. Let's just look at a quick quick deal here let's just jump in yep also looks like uh it needs to go to the bathroom but looks like it unless it's sped up it looks like it's moving faster than the tesla robot yeah kind of weird because the head isn't really a head so much as it's just like a dyson circle yep um it's got a vacuum arm it looks like yep Okay, so that that was one. Then we have what is this? The Amika from Engineered Artist. This looks like a drawing, drawing a cat. Oh, it's a full robot. Okay, I thought we were just see a hand or something. Oh, this is the one that has that has focused much more on facial expressions. Yeah. So they're asking questions of it. Yeah. Through the open source neural network project stable diffusion. Yeah. And, uh, what we need. So that's interesting. Yeah. When we're down. So now she's the robot's actually drawing with like a marker on a, or maybe it's a, a I'm not sure if it's like a digital whiteboard, but regardless. Very cool. Um, yeah. I mean, when you think you about how much engineering, right, to be able to control the pen and yeah. the pressure and the uh figure is a u.s based robotics is a new one known as the figure 01 or one general purpose humanoid robot that walks dynamically um it's five and a half feet tall let's look at this one really quick okay all right same thing kind of a shuffle step again reminds me of my uh 
my affectionately what I would call pop up my my grandfather from growing up walking just like him <laughs> sort of a shuffle step move <laughs> okay it's kind interesting a, to me that the shuffling gate is something that's apparently easier for someone who's who's lost some capabilities physically to accomplish right as you get older you end up moving towards a more shuffling gate and apparently it's easier to program that as well so right. there's some higher level of sophistication in our ability to move that has to be added to those ais to get them past the sort of geriatric shuffling and towards more dynamics like the boston dynamics robots robots right it's a balance thing i think right so like yeah, i would imagine so. how long yeah. can you keep one leg off the ground and still stay balanced as you yeah, lose yeah. that you start Good. to shuffle so i'll show just a few more here because i was 15 and more probably we want to go through but this evo bot now this isn't a full bot this is just two legs on wheels so let's just look at what this one does uh Okay, so it's got Two a basketball. Plus arms. Yeah, this is cool. <clears throat> what is it? it must have a gyroscope in it. Right. It does. It looks like a segue almost in that sense, right? <clears throat> yeah. So yep. I live in a big condo community, and I am very interested in this kind of thing as... Um, as like something that could help the community from a security standpoint and also mm -hmm. from like, you know, can I text it and say, meet me at the parking space so that you can help me carry in the stuff that I just got, yeah. right? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, we got some Amazon robots, which is like, you know, filling bins at Amazon. Uh, Amazon has been a huge leader in that. We have the uh, Disney one that we saw come out not too long ago in October, it says, uh, you have these sort of Disney, sort of more fun. They have like sort of a, you know, uh, Star Wars vibe to them with these robots. I think they've started to see these around Disneyland a little bit. Um, or while uh, Wally, -E, yeah, it looks like a little bit like a Wally -E robot. Um, cool idea with this. I think, you know, to see more of this would be pretty cool in, um, in and around the parks, just to see a little bit more interaction or robots that are, you know, sort of walking around amongst them with like maybe a handler that's doing, I could totally see this. So it's, this is pretty cool. And obviously with some of the real function of some of these animatronics, <clears throat> obviously that's going to get into the Disney Imagineering <clears throat> as well and make the, the, the rides feel more, I'm going to be at Epcot in a few days. It's going to make the, you know, the rides feel even more human-like and all that kind of stuff. So, and I think we have a few more here, but we'll just cut it there. But yeah, Spot, which is the Boston Dynamics one. Um, and then this guy, a compassionate companion for autism therapy. Okay, well, let's do this one really quick. All right, robotics in autism therapy is coming at as a boon for millions. It fosters engagement, consistency, and tailored support, enhancing social, emotional, and cognitive development for those with autism. Meet NAO, N-A-O, I don't know if that's how you say it, a compassionate companion for autism therapy, providing personalized support to children and their families. Let's just take a quick look at this. Now, this robot's only about two feet tall. And he's standing on a desk. Yep. And yeah, uh, interesting. I can't hear what they're saying, but he also looks like he needs to be sort of supported by the person behind him. So lots and lots and lots coming as far as robots. Obviously, a lot of this already exists today. This isn't like future tech. You know, we're, right. we're, we just watched what? At the end of 2023, we watched four or five different companies that have robots that are no longer tethered to the wires behind them anymore. You know, we saw the the Chinese one where the t traditional thing where they're kicking them or pushing them off balance and they stay on balance, no problem, and they recenter. So the, the days of a wire being tethered behind a robot for it to do what it needs to do are are clearly gone. And this is now what we're we're getting. And then if you layer that in with like you're saying, Andy, the onboard LLMs, you really do have something that starts to become highly, uh, you know, um, beneficial in a lot of different areas. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Brian. That was a really great tour of the uh, world of robotics coupled with AI. I want to share something. I'm going to share my screen and just move to something that's, you know, more immediately available to anyone who's, who's watching that is kind of a fun toy. Um, and this is, um, this is, uh, chat GPT with Dolly 
free. And uh, and what I did last night is I said, well, let's do a little Santa themed thing. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I said, okay, get, show me this control room that's now, you know, serving a much larger population. It's populated by elves. And <laughs> then I said, okay, that's really cool. But what's really fun and easy is I then shifted over to Deco Hair. Yeah. And I, I made it move <clears throat> literally with one click. And and so that's the place where we are with in terms of the screen-based toys that you can play with. And that's something that you can do right away. It mm -hmm. literally took me uh, all of maybe three and a half minutes to do that. And, and I didn't have to do much more than write a, a sentence about what the image was that I wanted. I wanted to share with you something though that I, I came across just a couple of days ago. You know, we don't talk about meta very often. Uh, we do mention them, but they're not <clears throat> often listed among the uh, conversations we have, you know, in the comparos of the chatbots yet. Um, but meta is a really, it's a center of excellence for the development of AI. And this thing that they've done, Cicero is really amazing. <clears throat> it's, the first agent that can play like a human in a strategically reasoning game, specifically diplomacy. And I'm just uh, scrolling through the images on the, on the screen. This guy, Jan LeCun, is the VP and chief AI scientist at, at Meta. He's always at all the conferences and so on. So this is a game that has to, you know, the Turing test is all about, can, can you tell whether it's a human or not? Well, mm -hmm. this AI plays just like a human in developing strategy. And there's an example down here that's playing on the screen where France says, you have Serbia and Rome to take. And Turkey says, they're impossible targets. And then France says, Greece, Ionian, Ionian, Tyr. Hmm, you're right, Turkey says, good ideas. It's a dialogue uh, talking about strategy, collaborative strategy in a, in a, in a you know, like a geopolitical game. And they uh, then talk about how they built that game. And this is just a, you know, it's a, <clears throat> it's an indication of where we're going to, where we're going to uh, end up mm -hmm. with AIs that are reasoning capable and have been programmed to do things that are at an advanced level. I've never played diplomacy. I'd be afraid to try it because I'd feel like <laughs> my, my strategic skills in that realm were, would be poor. Uh, but Cicero has been programmed to do that and can play it right now. So it, is anyone else having flashbacks to war games, right? The only way That's to what, win yeah, world domination is to not try to dominate the world. <laughs> um, but there is, uh, there is a documentary called Alpha Go, which is about yep. deep minds. Um, yeah. uh, <clears throat> AI that was trained to play Go, which is an ancient game, and um, and it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating documentary. If you're interested in any of this, it was also trained. It was trained to play humans, but the reason that it was successful is that it did not play human like, mm. right? Um, mm. But one of the things mm. that's really interesting about that documentary is you watch in real time the um the engineers realize that it has taught itself non-human strategy mm. right because mm. yeah. it was being educated on how humans play and every like it, it was a big uh it was yeah. a big thing in the asian world so you could so like it was broadcast there were people live broadcasting the thing all of that's in the documentary and you can see the shock on everyone's face when the move was made that is not a human move no yeah. one would choose yeah. to no make that. No one would have done it, yeah. Yeah, I love that idea. <laughs> Well, I listen, we're, we're coming up on time here and I want to, I want to try to keep this one close to 30, but let's just kind of run around as three of us, right? So what I would love to know maybe as a, as a sort of a wrap up is in 2024, because we've talked about some really big far fetching, but then also close here in 2024, what are some of the industries that you think will be in terms of tech gadgetry toys will be the most um, impacted? And I'll give mine very quickly. I think wearables 
we've already seen this. I didn't get a chance to show it, but um, Apple with their heads up display that you can see through, it's kind of creepy looking. Um, but then they're also coming soon with uh, Apple glasses. Maybe we already know Meta has the glasses. Uh, Smart watches are getting smarter, the pin, the whole, all of it, right? So I think wearables in 2024 with AI infused, huge, huge advancements there. I would say outside of that, where do I think we'll see the biggest like impact? Um, Probably therapy, honestly. I think we're going to see more tech and gadgets and stuff that have something to do with therapy. We sort of talked a little bit about that, whether it's the the AI dog or it's just better help, but more, you know, AI infused and stuff. I, I think those are probably two of the areas I would say 2024, we're going to see some big pushes in those areas. What do you guys think? I'll, I'll say, uh, <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, Alexa and Siri you know, have been in the home for a long time. I think sure. we're going to see tremendous advances in 2024. Good the call. home is going to get much, much smarter mm. and it'll be integrated with, uh, you know, internet of things, communication within your Wi-Fi network. And so there'll be a, just a, a, an explosion of capabilities driven by those AI conversational interfaces, Alexa and Siri. So I'm going to go for educational tech. So the robots that we've talked about, the dog and that kind of stuff have been comforting um, and playful, but there are some beginning robots that are basically tutors for your kid. Um, I do think that all of this, I'm sure we're gonna have a show about it, uh, like comes with like, hey, these are some red flags you should be aware of. But um, uh, in the same reason that I'm excited about being able to teach myself content, based on my learning style, there will be robots that can make expressions, not like the, not like the face mask that we saw, but like have a screen, right? Yeah. So that you can see lips moving and that kind of stuff. Um, and there are some already, uh, the ones that I saw were about 700, 600, um, and those prices will come down. And I think that will be a huge shift that yeah. kids can uh, interact, um, yeah. Yeah, no, huge. I, I agree with you. The, the smart home education, wearables, maybe the mental health side of things or the just health in general. Um, would love to see that. Uh, I think those are all real good use, um, guesses for 2024. OK, let's just talk real quick as we wrap things up for our Christmas episode. Talk about what is coming up this week, because this isn't the only day we're here. Um, so today was all about Christmas. Tomorrow, we're talking about the future role of websites and business, how websites are going to have to adapt to AI. Wednesday, we have the news as always, what, what's what been going on in the last seven days and what that'll be interesting to talk about. Thursday is our AI prediction show for 2024. So maybe some of this stuff is going to come up because we were just talking about some of specifically the gadgets, but we'll put our predictions for 2024 so we can see a year from now whether we were right or not. And then Friday, we have a review of some of the more popular image upscalers. There's been a couple that have come on to the Magnific. block lately. Magnific. Yes. Yeah, Magnific. Uh, also like uh, just what Midjourney is doing and other other upscalers are doing as well and, and what that means. So that'll be great. And then next week, just very briefly, we have AI relationships. We'll be back uh, next week on, on uh, January 1. So for our first show of the year of 2024, AI relationships, talking about Digi and some other ones out there. That's going to be an interesting topic. Um, Tuesday of next week, we have talk, discussing small businesses. Do they have a competitive advantage about you know, against medium and large size businesses because of how quickly they can adapt and move with AI. Wednesday will be the news. Thursday, this is 1-4, January 4th, super alignment. Can't wait to talk about that. And then Friday, 1-5, we'll be talking about what do you need to know about prompt engineering to be successful in 2024? A lot of it stayed the same. OpenAI just put out some really great stuff about prompt engineering. We're going to give you our best tips and advice for prompt engineering to make you successful in 2024, no matter what what job you're doing and all that kind of stuff. So lots of good shows coming up. Merry Christmas, Andy. Merry Christmas, Beth. Thanks for Merry coming Christmas. and hanging out today. And uh, I will be back. I think we'll all of us be in and out this week or whatever, but I'm sure it'll be a bunch of great shows. Uh, and that's that. Merry Christmas, I'm everybody. here all week. Join ho, me. Ho, ho. Here all week. <laughs> I'll be in and out. All right, guys. Ho, ho, ho to everybody. And have a wonderful one. See ya.